Greetings and welcome back to another episode in our series of 1,000 Evidences for the LDS Church. In this one, number 149, we will be talking about the Polynesian knowledge of the Sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Since the first Polynesians came from Book of Mormon lands in the Americas, uh, that is according to the uh, story of Hagoth, uh, as, as told in Alma chapter 63, verses 5 through 8. They knew of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and his uh, ch uh, charge to symbolically eat his flesh in remembrance of his sacrifice. During Old Testament times, the prophets knew of the coming sacrifice of Jesus Christ and offered sacrifices in their own, um, of their own in anticipation of his ultimate sacrifice. The Book of Mormon prophets, like their Hebrew counterparts in the Near East, also offered sacrifice. See, for example, Mosiah chapter 2, verse 3. In the South Pacific Islands, descendants of the Book of Mormon people uh, conducted ceremonies in which they offered a type of sacrifice which resembled a form of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. However, since the islanders became isolated from the prophets and ancient church of the Americas, their beliefs evolved significantly from the truth until only a few fragments survived along with some perversions of truth. In Tahiti, the British voyager Captain James Cook observed a ceremony in which a man was bound to a long pole and killed. Certain dignitaries were then given small portions of the man's body, which they pretended to eat. Captain Cook made no comparison to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ or to the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. But uh, the, the close sim similarity, albeit grossly perverted, is remarkable. Um, you can read about this in um, Dorothy and Thomas Hobbler, The Voyages of Captain Cook, New York, G.P. Putman's uh, Sons, 1983, page 158. A sketch of the incident uh, made by one of Cook's men is shown in John R. Hale, Age of Exploration, New York Time, Incorporated, 1966, page 156. Amazing, isn't it? The similarities to the sacrament of the Lord's Supper is obvious to the most skeptical critics. This is another powerful evidence for the truthfulness of the LDS Church as well as the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. Don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. And remember, call, don't fall. Call on the Lord who is loving and kind. Don't fall for the wiles of the devil.